the end of that first episode, though, of, of Myrtle, um, I went to my dressing room and I cried. Mm. And, um, and then the producers came to check on me. And my dad told him that I would never do that character again. Because I just wanted to get through the episode because I was too worried. And I knew I had done it so well. I was like, damn, they definitely going to make fun of me at school uh -huh. for this. I mean, my, my, I'm like, I'm full. I'm like, I had gone there. What are you doing? I'm your dream come true. Ah, you're a nightmare. Now go home. And ironically, when I did go to school after the first time I did it, no one made fun of me. Everybody just thought it was absolutely hysterical. So sometimes it's kind of interesting how we, you know, we heap these societal concerns on other people that are not even experiencing that at all. Everybody at school just thought it was a great performance. What's going on in here? Unfortunately, not much. <laughs> so I had too much pride at that point, at that age, to go back then and say, hey, I want to play it again. To continue chasing after you would be humiliating and unworthy of an Urkel. Sir, and my lady. And um, so it, it took about two to three years in between, and I was just kind of bored, just random on a lunch hour. And I went into the writer's room, and I said, if you guys want to do Myrtle again, like, I'll do it. And I remember they just cheered. Hey! Hi, y'all. It was a good shot in the arm. At that, at that age, I was starting to get a good idea for what were going to be good sweet, sweet episodes and I just felt like we needed the shot. And that's how Myrtle came back. Mm. But make sure to save room for dessert. And what's for dessert? Me. <laughs> <laughs>